Head out on a wee mission, see what I can find for my uh, work lunch this week. Just waiting on a couple of the bros at the moment, they're running a little bit late. Yeah, it looks like the boys might have done a bit of a no show with that, although they're running really late. But um, I'm just gonna go out there, get it anyway, take my time. I'll start off shallow, eh? Maybe about five meters deep. Um, some advice out there for you, uh, guys who are just starting out diving or interested in getting into diving. It's a pretty dangerous game, eh? You know, anything can happen out here, so probably shouldn't be di uh, diving alone. Um, probably setting a bad example by heading out here by myself, but uh, I've always been a bit of a risk taker, so, you know, I just believe um, sometimes you've got to get out there and take those risks. Uh, i just got to put that put that car on the table this weekend, so I'm pretty keen to get out there, eh? Yeah, guys, so always pace, double check your gears before you go for a dive, otherwise shit happens. Yeah, I don't live too far from home, so come back to the weight belt. We out. So the cam boys, brother Shannon, the kai. Bro, it is looking actually primo out there, eh? I was just gonna go in there. Just down over here, I, I was already in the water, bro, and then just go straight out there and around, eh? Here I was uh, talking about these boys for being late, and, and I'm the useless fellow who leaves my weight belt behind. I thought I was getting some really good footage of this conger eel. Uh, I dived right down just to get in, zoom and get a closer look. Uh, but the GoPro was pretty much just facing straight at the ground. So yeah, bit of a fail on that one. Uh, pretty gutted because um, yeah, they're quite beautiful to watch in the water. I've seen quite a few conger eels too. And this one was, oh, it was probably a good two or three meters long. Uh, after I saw the conga, I decided to get the spear gun out and load it up. Uh, I just noticed noticed a lot of fish life starting to spawn up. A few uh, blue moki were floating around, so I thought I'd drop down, uh, hunt around, see if I can find anything decent. But um, yeah, it just looked like a few undersized moki, so decided to hold fire on those um, just in case they were undersized. One of my spearfishing goals is to spear a kingfish. Uh, I've only ever seen one school of kingfish, which was up in Milford Sound. The water's just a bit, a bit cold down here for them, I heard. So yeah, they're not hanging around down here um, and they only pass through. Uh, hopefully I can go on a bit of a dive mish up north sometime this summer and uh, one of you boys up that end can uh, show me around your diving spots. As I got out a wee bit further into this reef, I started to notice some big cracks and some big, some big boulders out there, and it looked like some pretty perfect cray ground. So I thought I'd chuck the spear back on the float and um, have a decent look around for some uh, some spiny reds. The thing about diving in dirty water like this is you're probably never going to see uh, whatever you come across ever again. So you have to go for it straight away. Yeah. 
Good male here. He's a big boy. Nice hard shell. There'll be more around here then, bro. There'll be big females around here. Yeah, I don't get crayfish too often, so I was pretty pumped up about that one, especially with him being such a big boy. As soon as I dropped down and I seen him, I knew I had to get him then and there, otherwise I was never going to find him again uh, in the dirty water like that. As far as I was concerned, uh, it was a successful dive already. Got the crayfish, so thought I'd move on to some kinners. And there were big fat ones in this patch too. Uh, it's probably because of the seaweed they feed on. Look at them basketballs, Fano. Look for them. Hey? Can't hear what? <laughs> There's heat down there. Not bad, good size. <laughs> He's just a big patch of them right down there, eh? Oh, what the f <laughs> My gun's gone. <laughs> oh, well. Mother f Close boy. So it took me a while to realise, but my gun had actually slipped out of the float boat. I hadn't strapped it in there properly, so it had just uh, fallen out while I was uh, not paying any attention. So I dived down, tried to retrieve it. Uh, after a few dives, I just gave up. I just thought, hey, this this water's way too dirty for me to see anything in really, and I could be there all day looking for it. Pretty much gave up uh, after a good five minutes, and uh, yeah, that was it. See you, gun. Where? Is it big? A few years ago, if somebody would have even mentioned there were a shark in the water, uh, I would have been out of there like a lightning flash. Um, learning about the different types of sharks and their behaviours um, has been a really big step uh, for me getting over my fear of being in the water with sharks. And these seven gillers aren't too dangerous. It was a great white, different story there. Couldn't see him. Can't see him. I was just trying to find a seven killer. Does he look like he could eat your arm off? Nah, not afraid. <laughs> no, I had to crack up here at the bro shed and uh, rise to the surface with his hands full of kinners and a cheesy smile on his face. Kinners? I've got enough kinners. I think these piles over there, bro, there's a big bed, like a big white. White patch yeah, over there. Know, yeah. Have you seen that before? Yeah, bro. Yeah, I'm gonna go head over there. I've already got, because I've got kinders at home too. Yeah. Got my crate, sweet, got me lunch. Yeah. Plus, I don't wanna get eaten. So, this is a big bed of power that I go back and check up on every once in a while. I've known about it for quite a long time. Heaps of them over here, but they're just tiny, bro. There's hundreds just right down there, but they're just too little, eh?
Now I only ever take one or two power from a place like this. Um, I think just as recreational divers, you know, everyone's got their own standards and um, that's my standard for an area like this anyway. I just think it's, um, you know, you're going to damage these powers if you go shucking them off the rocks and measuring them, uh, trying to trying to get yourself you know, your 10 powers that you are allowed. So uh, why not just take enough for a food and, you know, leave those ones here to grow. Anyway, we didn't stick around for too much longer. Got us a feed, so yeah, time to time to head back in now. And uh, the GoPro ran out of battery anyway. Oh well, that sucks, guys. The uh, GoPro ran out of battery out there, so didn't even get to finish off uh, filming the rest of the dive. Uh, pretty eventful dive though. Ended up picking up a good sized buck, good sized cray there. He's a big boy. He didn't put up much of a fight actually, to be honest. I just uh, dropped down and maybe for wasn't even that deep, four or five meters, and yeah, he was just sitting there looking at me. Didn't even really put his feelers out too much, and uh, yeah, he didn't even put up that much of a fight. A few kinners there, and uh, just the one power. But yeah, he ended up seeing a conger eel, and the younger fella uh, we were diving with Kai, he actually seen a seven giller, so pretty eventful dive. I'm just stoked that I got some uh, protein for my lunches this week. I'll make up some nice garlic and uh, ginger stir fry crayfish, I think. If you like the video, uh, subscribe, like, comment, uh, share it. Um, it just really helps the algorithm on YouTube and gets my name out there a little bit more. So I appreciate it if you can do that for me. If you want to see some more adventures, just follow along and um, we'll catch you on the next one, eh?